peace, Farmer Courtney here. Today's topic is learning like a child, right? So oftentimes adults, we can really overcomplicate things that are challenging for us to learn. And so I was walking this line where I was coming into knowledge that the Nation of Islam even existed and first hearing and being exposed to their mathematical theology at a time that I was really searching to understand what we were going to do about this huge risk to the health and um, enjoyment and just freedom of all of humanity. Like, what what were we going to do about <laughs> about these insane pressures from the chemicals in the food and the water and the drugs and just everywhere you turned like what were we going to do about it <laughs> and I felt like I have to learn like a child right where are the children's materials at <laughs> I like put myself in the children's section so I used to get um you know things that I could get my hands on like children's materials if I um you know I would ask our friend like well if you if you see any children's materials and um or and then I would start to be able to mail order things. And so I would get anything I saw. I didn't really see very much because I think, um, you know, back in that time period, had I gone in person physically, you know, to a public Savior's Day event or something, and there were vendors with tables and booksellers and stuff, I might have come across more things. But I had this um, Celebrate Savior's Day CD that I really cherished because I just felt like you don't forget what you sing, you know, so to have the um, the children's music and to just have a real simple introduction to the teachings is really what I needed. I wasn't, you know, thinking I was this like big scholar or anything like that. Like sometimes um, when I read some of the, the argumentative comments and stuff that people put on, um, not so much on here, but like on IG, people with private pages will just come on and, and, and say all kind of, you know, negative things or, or want to argue with me. And I'm thinking, you know, there are, is an actual, uh, well-organized structure of academics and intellectuals within the nation of Islam who we can all learn from, who do an excellent job painstakingly laying it all out clear as day for us all to see and methodically track with and footnoted up the wazoo. Like, if you have any questions, why am I somebody that you think should be fielding them like really <laughs> you know I mean I can if you have questions and you want to know you know what book list should I start with by all means you know send me a message I, I did work on that <laughs> I put that together that documentation together but as as far as if you want to have um some sort of debate or something like that I highly doubt that I am the one <laughs> to to feel those questions, you know, because I'm like a child. I'm still really learning anything. Um, and so, you know, it, it isn't asked in an inquisitive spirit of respectfulness and awe or, you know, wow <laughs> kind of thing. And I was just thinking about learning like a child. Like, it, I don't know if you remember doing, you know, like origami and stuff in school. I remember the first time that I saw someone, you know, fold up this little balloon that then they like blew into and they could fling it across the table and stuff. Like I was in wonder of all of that stuff. And I know that, you know, it might not be the greatest analogy, but think like, so that same spirit, if you hear something and you're just like, really? Wow. Where can I learn more about that? How'd you do that? Or what makes you say that? You know, like that kind of spirit. I can direct you <laughs> to, to what, you know, stream of consciousness enlightened me, but I'm not the person to come on and just start arguing with and this and that. And you can tell a lot by how somebody asks the question. So today I was just thinking about learning as a child because I was remembering um, how much I will always remember the times in the car with the girls when we're listening to NFA Studios. So on NFA Studios, Never Fall Again Studios, it's the Nation of Islam Netflix and highly recommend getting it, you know, because it's, um, 
there's a lot of information it's enjoyable to watch but our favorite you know the program I find myself watching the most is uh, you know with the children like the uh, the the intermediate so like the cream of the crop that's not um, a children's program necessarily but it's it's real fun and um, informative and so and then the teaching train and so you know the teaching train has all these these songs that are really educational and catchy and you just um you know all the all the feels all the levels it's um there's especially there's like some lines that get me every time that i just um yeah it's just this sense and this feeling of uh there's great power in the in the teaching train music and so I am not the only one <laughs> that has experienced that. So some, someone extracted all the songs and made them separate so you don't have to, um, you know, watch the whole, the whole show if you just want the soundtrack. So it's, you know, it's really something that is going to be sort of um, in the background of a lot of our memories as of late, driving in the car. And so I was just thinking about early learning, early materials, and um, I am by no means any sort of example of um, childhood education or anything like that, but we've always homeschooled the children when they were younger, and now we just we homeschool. <laughs> but um, I struggled with how to teach, how to teach, right? Like, um, well, I mean, there was a challenge within all subjects, but especially theology, uh, spirituality, religious studies, I really struggle with that, you know, um, it's, it's not as if, uh, it's that simple for a Caucasian child to just, you know, pick up this book and to have the same feeling that they have when, um, you know, say if, if a Caucasian child like picks up all the, um, like Christian materials and stuff, like it's, it's not the same. I struggled for years of trying to translate one to the other. So I finally just settled on what I need to be most concerned about is the imagery, right? So this was before there were all the great uh, publishing books and things that are now available. I look through Instagram sometimes and I'm just like, wow, that's blessed because that is so importantly crucial for all of humanity to see proper representation of a factual worldview over the you know eons of time and so that was one thing that was important to me was to give um you know an afrocentric view of the bible of history and things like that despite the fact that you know we're a caucasian family living in the middle of nowhere uh really just struggling <laughs> to or me i really as myself as a mother struggling to um find my way within why do I have a kernel of understanding of these teachings? What am I supposed to do with this articulation? Um, and how am I supposed to live out my purpose, right? Because like, people might follow me and think, okay, so on uh, Tuesday and Thursday, she was talking nonstop about natural remedies, homeopathy, farms, zip codes and now she's talking about the nation of islam and the honorable minister louis farrakhan like how does that work what <laughs> what is up with that so it took me a while to sort of come into um a next level of my own self-development and maturity so anyway it just had me thinking about children and um yeah the power of uh children's songs and memory memorization and just uh, you know, having a connection to topics that might feel really weighty in the past to me when I thought like, how do I um, explain things to my children and how do I um, frame them? And so, yeah, I, you know, I was reflecting on just how much I have grown and changed and then also just how much support <laughs> has come in the form of educational materials if we would but use them you know like there is just such an abundance it seems like all of a sudden for um if you are someone who's striving to to piece things together that there's more than ever there's just such an abundance out there um so it just got me you know with my mind on early early materials had me thinking back on early 
uh, learning materials that I, I had had. I also had, speaking of visuals, this is also, um, you know, a picture that I had in the home, not necessarily on, you know, on the downstairs living room, but I did have it framed in the house from the center of um, one of the papers. It wasn't the final call. I think it was um, like a Canadian Muhammad Speaks. Could I be correct about that? I don't know. Um, I remember it being in, in two languages. It was a very old paper from like 1999. I had it in there. <laughs> and so I had that. And then I had um, this VHS tape. And I had another VHS tape, which I unwisely lent out to someone that was my absolute favorite <laughs> and um, kind of the video that I could never ever get out of my head never um, you know like speaking of children's material you know children's materials uh, and just seeing interconnectedness and children's songs and stuff um, there was a story on that t on that VHS not this one but um, the I've spoken about this many times, the 1975 production around that time of um, the life of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And they went on, you know, the roads that he used to walk um, and to Mother Clara Muhammad, you know, before <laughs> that was her name when they were when they were courting and just showing where he was from in Georgia and just kind of telling his story. And when um, when he was recounting how um you know growing up it brought to mind that that children's uh it's not a nursery rhyme but the song you know peas porridge hot peas porridge in the cold in the um peas porridge hot peas porridge cold peas porridge in the pot nine days old some like it hot some like it cold you know that whole that whole song um and the most honorable elijah muhammad was talking about um eating um you know spoiled beans and putting vinegar on it to kill the taste and you know because it food turns you do batch cooking and then back in those days you know um refrigeration and all that kind of stuff um yeah that was a that was a hurdle and a struggle and so uh, one day I was at the farmer's market and I you know I have thermoses and stuff for bringing around hot food I have been doing that for years and then I the timing was like way off for when I heated it up when I put it in the thermos it was over you know 90 degrees that day and then you're not supposed to keep hot food hot for more than six hours you know like whether it's at a catering event and it's just out with sterno or it's in a thermos six hours is generally the line where it would be considered on you know not unsafe I guess is is maybe um that's a per someone's opinion, but you know, that that's where you draw the line is, um, six hours. That's a wrap. You know, <laughs> that food is not, is not to be served and offered. So I opened it up and I was really hungry at the market. I have been pushed like to my max that day. I hadn't had, um, I don't think I had had anything to eat that day. And so I was, I opened up my thermos of bean soup and it was spoiled. And I have thought about that and that video and actually making this video since that day. <laughs> like, um, it was definitely a year ago at least, maybe two years ago. Um, but that, so it always stuck with me, uh, you know, the early things that I would, that I would hear, things like that, um, just, just stuck with me. And um, I've always felt like I could trust the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. I didn't necessarily know uh, what he was saying at first, and then I didn't know where I fit in it, and I didn't feel like I have any idea how to actually live out my Islam if I didn't have any instruction from people, but um, I did know that it wasn't something that I was letting go because of um, you know, my personal judgment or what I, it was just more of my personal ignorance of like, how do I, um, how do I apply this to my own life? Like, um, if it is a universal teaching, if there is hope for Caucasian people to have, you know, the thousand years of, um, you know, if they accept Islam. So 
it gave me hope to be like, okay, here's some direction, but then how does that go? You know, because it was just one of those self-study things uh, for a while for me, and I am not the strongest in self-study as far as, um, you know, organization and discipline and all that. So um, anyway, just wrapping it up. Thank you so much for joining me. This is day seven of my 67 posts. Um, just, you know, giving thanks and gratitude for the 67 years of service of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Uh, I was thinking of what to post on his birthday and it came to me that actually I was to do 67 posts because um, being consistent <laughs> and um, addressing what was communicated to me in a dream that I had where he said it is not about what you can do it's about what you're not doing do what you're not doing you know <laughs> so yes sir do what I'm not doing not being consistent not not telling all these stories that have been piling up in my mind and in my legal pads and in my google drive and in my notes and all the random things that I had in my camera roll and you know, all the things that I have around. So um, I am striving to post here. And ironically, I was having such a block of getting on YouTube and now um, none of my videos are uploading to Instagram. So uh, that's, that's the deal. So that's where these are. And I appreciate you know you checking them out and I'll see you tomorrow. All right, peace.